Hey guys, Seth Milliken here with the Georgia Transportation Alliance. It's great to be with you guys today talking about a subject that's near and dear to my heart. We uh, obviously are a little bit biased, but at the Georgia Transportation Alliance, we really see transportation investment as a key component of Georgia's economic mobility and economic success um, as a state. So the Georgia Transportation Alliance is a coalition of companies under the umbrella of the Georgia Chamber of Commerce, and we work on policy and advocacy programs related to transportation issues in Georgia, and I'm excited to be able to talk to you today kind of about an issue that's really of significant focus for us right now, uh, and it has shown itself to be even more important considering what we've been through uh, in the state of Georgia over the last six months or so. So glad to be with you today. We're going to talk through a little bit of Georgia's history in the transportation area, talk a little bit about where Georgia is today and the relevance of the freight and logistics industry to our state, and then also look out at the future and talk a little bit about what Georgia's future looks like. All right, this is a uh, just a, a short representation of what Georgia's history looks like uh, from a transportation perspective. Back in 1916, the Georgia Highway Department was established and that later became the Georgia Department of Transportation. If you're looking for an anecdotal example of how transportation investment and economic development are related, uh, it doesn't, doesn't uh, take long to find two of Georgia's uh, top corporate citizens in Delta Airlines and UPS, both of whom have located their corporate headquarters in Georgia. And if you look in the mid 1900s, there are a lot of developments that took place between the opening of the Interstate 285, the growth of the Savannah Port that really began to cement Georgia's position as a, as a national leader in transportation around the country. We've seen remarkable progress over the last 10 or 12 years under the leadership that we've had down at the state capitol. Uh, looking at the passage of the Transportation Investment Act about 10 years ago, GDOT moving forward with some uh, tremendous uh, projects around the metro Atlanta area, the passage of House Bill 170 in uh, 2015, and then passage of, uh, of uh, transit governance legislation in 2016 and 2018. So Georgia's history economically is very strongly built on transportation investment, and we've seen that really increase in Georgia over the last 10 years or so. Next couple of slides, we're going to talk through uh, some of Georgia's transportation assets, and I'm not going to hit all of these, but this is just a great representation to show how important our physical transportation assets are to Georgia. Uh, as we have almost 7,200 miles of interstate highway around the country, um, we have almost 130,000 public road miles. This other statistic right here I want to focus on, and we're going to come back to this, Georgia moves about 6 million tons of freight across our road and bridge network every week. And again, we're going to come back to that. That's a very important statistic for our conversation as we look at Georgia's future in transportation. The freight and logistics industry is a big industry for our state. Um, Georgia has over 4,600 miles of freight rail track around the state. That is uh, built of two class one railroads, both of which are on dock at the Savannah uh, port. And we also have 26 short line railroads that serve as last mile connectors to our communities around the state. Everybody knows Georgia's home to the world's busiest airport, the airport that has been Georgia's busiest airport for a number of years. What a lot of folks don't realize is that Hartsfield is one of 107 publicly owned airports across the state of Georgia, and all of our regional airports play a key role in our economic success as a state, and they obviously support a tremendous number of jobs as well as over $2 billion in economic activity around the state each year. So just a quick list of some uh, quick facts to recap what we just talked about and begin to transition into this focus on freight and logistics and why that's so important for the state of Georgia right now. Savannah is the largest container port on the East Coast. It's also the fastest growing port in the entire country. Uh, the Port of Savannah is the fourth busiest U.S. container port uh, in the entire United States. And then the Port of Brunswick is the number two U.S. port for imports and exports of vehicles. Again, if you're looking for anecdotal stories to talk about how important transportation is to economic development, this statistic right here is a great one to point to. 
One of the reasons that the Port of Brunswick has become the number two U.S. port for total vehicle imports and exports is the construction of the Kia automobile plant over in West Point, Georgia. That's a huge boost to uh, the Port of Brunswick and has, has been so since that was constructed. Everybody knows that Atlanta is the, uh, one of the worst cities in the United States for traffic. Um, if you live in Atlanta, you're going to spend over 70 hours a year uh, stuck in traffic. Everyone knows that Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport, again, is and has been one of the world's busiest airports for many, many years. But this last bullet point right here, I want to I want to focus in on. We noted earlier that the Savannah Port is one of the fastest growing ports in, in the country. And their projections uh, suggest that they will double in capacity over the next eight years. So between today and the year 2028, they'll go from processing about four and a half million containers a year to almost nine million containers a year. And again, six million tons of freight across our road and bridge network uh, every week, doubling our traffic down at the port of Savannah. All of this means tremendous economic opportunities for the state of Georgia as we look at our freight and logistics future. One of the words that most accurately describes Georgia right now is growth. Um, we're currently undergoing the 2020 census. And most projections suggest that Georgia is going to uh, become the seventh or eighth most populated state in the entire United States. And then by the next census that we will move into the top five in terms of uh, state size across the United States. The challenge with that is that growth is not distributed equitably across the state. So even as we see the state grow as a whole, we also see that there are gonna be communities around the state that will actually stay static or lose population over the next uh, 10 or 15 years. And that's obviously a challenge for us to be thinking about, both as we think about economic development, but as we think about the role that freight and logistics plays in that economic development picture. We also know that economic factors are tied to population factors. And so as we see that population inequitably distributed across the state of Georgia, we also see that that's gonna affect uh, local economies all across the state of Georgia. Um, and we're gonna see some counties that will become more economically distressed as that population change takes place. So as we move forward, we're going to uh, look at a couple of slides that we actually borrowed from the Georgia Department of Transportation. Uh, Commissioner Russell McMurray gave a presentation last fall to a group of legislators that had some great information, and, and he was kind enough to share that with us so that we could share that with you. This is a visualization of the top 18 U.S. goods distribution markets across the United States. No surprise, Atlanta and Georgia is right in the middle of that conversation. This is also a great representation of what that freight traffic looks like coming in from other states, coming in from our port, uh, going to Atlanta, and then being distributed across the rest of the country. Now, most of that truck traffic serves local markets here in Georgia or markets in the southeast. However, the interesting and possibly concerning factor about all of this is that uh, of all of the containers that come into the Port of Savannah, over 80% are going to go on a truck. So the national average for that uh, modal share for trucks is about 70% and Georgia is almost 15% higher. So we're seeing a tremendous amount of growth coming in through the port. We're seeing a tremendous amount of population growth. Most of that growth in commercial traffic is going on a truck. And for those of us that have tried to drive through Atlanta anytime recently, we know the challenge is going to be capacity for that growth in truck traffic across the United States. So just to summarize, Georgia has a great history in transportation, has a great history with developing and building freight and logistics networks. And because of that leadership, we have an excellent set of assets uh, that are here in the state of Georgia. We have 15 interstate highways. Metro Atlanta is the second largest inland port in the country, only behind Chicago. We have the world's busiest airport. We've got a fantastic Southeast rail hub between our class ones and short line railroads. And we have, uh, we have a strong start to our network of inland ports around the state as well. And again, to recap, we have the largest and fastest growing U.S. container port, the fourth busiest container port in the entire United States that is handling significant import and export tonnage on an annual basis. 
Going back to the point about modal share with those uh, containers that are coming in at the port and coming into our state, uh, a significant portion of those containers are not going to stay here. Somewhere between 30 and 50 percent of the containers that come into the port of Savannah are going to a final destination somewhere outside the state of Georgia. This is again another uh, slide and graphic that we borrowed from the Georgia Department of Transportation that shows by interstate quarter how much or what percentage of that traffic is going to a destination that is outside the state of Georgia. So for example, if you live on the I-75 quarter, about one fourth, 21, 22% of that traffic is going somewhere outside the state of Georgia. If you live on the I-20 quarter, about 28% of that traffic is going somewhere out of this outside the state of Georgia. And that's very important for our policymakers to know and to consider as they think about what the future of freight and logistics looks like in the state of Georgia. Again, another graphic that we borrowed from the Georgia Department of Transportation that, that really shows how important Georgia's, Georgia's position is, not just in the Southeast, but to the Midwest and to the Northeast as well for the distribution of that freight traffic as it comes through the state of Georgia and then distributes out across the rest of the United States. Obviously things are a little bit different uh, now than they were six months ago. And one of the things that we've been actively engaged in both at the Chamber and the Georgia Transportation Alliance is beginning to quantify and construct some data trends on what transportation and infrastructure looks like in a post COVID economy. Um, it's still early. We have good data. We don't have a lot of trends, but here are some of the things that we do know. Based on information uh, that we got from the State Road and Tollway Authority, Georgia's toll revenues are down about 30 percent. Governor Brian Kemp and our, our leaders at the State Capitol did a, a fantastic job this year grappling with how to address the needed cuts in the state budget um, as a result of the coronavirus pandemic and the quarantine that took back uh, took place back in the spring and the summer, GDOT was not immune to, to that austerity. And so their share of budget cuts uh, for the 2021 budget was about $300 million. That's as a result of, of lost motor fuel revenue and a variety of other factors. In Metro Atlanta, we know that MARTA ridership is down about 70% on rail and about 50% on bus. And again, that's a, a snapshot of the effects that the pandemic has had on uh, our state's economy. We talked about Hartsfield-Jackson being the world's busiest airport. We, we still believe that to be the case, but airport traffic at Hartsfield-Jackson at its peak was down almost 95%. It's a really staggering statistic if you think about that. The Dow Jones Transportation Index dropped almost 20% in March of this year during the, the height of the, of the coronavirus pandemic here in Georgia. That was the largest month over month drop in the transportation index since they started tracking it back in the early 1980s. At its peak, we know that truck volumes were down about 10 or 15 percent in Georgia. The good news is, and we've been in communication with GDOT and some of our other partner agencies around the state, these numbers have absolutely begun to turn around. And we, we do think that traffic uh, throughout the state of Georgia is back to almost pre-pandemic levels. And that's a good sign, not just for transportation infrastructure investment, but it's a good sign for our state's economy because that means folks are, are being able to go back to work. So just to summarize some of these things that we've talked about today, we know that port traffic is dramatically increasing over the next several years, over the next uh, eight or 10 years. We know that airport traffic uh, is projected to greatly increase by percentage at the Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport. We talked about Georgia as one of the fastest growing states in the country. As people move to Georgia, they're bringing cars. We're expecting to see another 1.5 million cars on our road between 2015 and 2030. Again, we talked about modal share with that traffic coming into the port. Significant portion of that traffic is going to go on a truck. Now our transit, in, our transit number here uh, says need number. And that's, a, that's an area where there's not as much data out there and we're constantly engaged in gathering more data. So we're continuing to look at that picture and those public transportation systems across the state of Georgia. And we'll continue to work on what that projection looks like. 
So looking into the future, let's transition maybe a little bit from talking about where we are uh, currently in Georgia to what the future looks like. And we know that because of population growth, because of that growth at the port, because of the accompanying economic development that goes along with that, one of the things that we need to be thinking about is how do we responsibly and strategically invest in freight and logistics assets across the state of Georgia so that we can handle that population growth and really turn that into an economic advantage. Commissioner Russell McMurray spoke to the Georgia Commission on Freight and Logistics last fall, last November, and I'm not going to go through all of these numbers, but the top line projections from GDOT indicate that we're going to need another two and a half, roughly two and a half billion dollars a year to invest just in freight and logistics system assets in order to be competitive and be able to handle that growth that we've talked about coming to the state of Georgia. The challenge is I don't think anybody has an extra two and a half billion dollars a year lying around. And so the challenge for our policymakers moving forward is to be able to look at these factors, consider what the future looks like, and then make some decisions about how we strategically invest in those assets and prepare for that growth. One of the things that we do here at the Chamber and we do at the Georgia Transportation Alliance is we like to talk to voters and, and do polling on an annual basis and, and ask some of the same questions so we can track trends and see what public opinion is doing and what folks think about the transportation issue. So 49% of the folks that we talk to this year think that state government has primary responsibility for funding and maintaining our transportation infrastructure. There's no surprise there. Folks in Georgia are pretty smart. I think they understand that, that uh, the Calvary is not going to come uh, riding in from Washington or somewhere else, that we need to take responsibility for our own transportation future. Also, no surprise, 90% of the folks that we talk to believe that transportation is important for economic development and job growth. This is one of my favorites because we talk with elected officials a lot across the state of Georgia, and we also like to find out what do people think about how elected leaders respond to these challenges. 51% of the voters that we talk to are more likely to re-elect an elected official, a politician, a political leader who votes to increase transportation funding. Again, folks in Georgia are smart. They've seen the benefits that have come to our state as a result of this leadership and this growth that we've talked about over the last uh, 10 or 15 years, and they see that as the net good for our state. So what does the future look like? Um, I mentioned political leadership. We've seen a lot of political leadership and a lot of great progress on transportation issues over the last 10 or 15 years. Uh, I'm glad to tell you, I'm glad to report from our interactions with our elected officials at the chamber and at GTA, it doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon. We were able to partner with the uh, Georgia legislature, uh, House Transportation uh, Chairman Kevin Tanner and Senate Transportation Chairman Brandon Beach back in 2019 to establish the Georgia Commission on Freight and Logistics. So the Freight and Logistics Commission is a group, and, and you can see the list here uh, on the screen is a group of elected leaders, business leaders, local elected officials who are uh, convened by the legislature to look at these very issues that we've been talking about today, to look at the future of Georgia's freight and logistics network and begin to form some recommendations for how we address that growth into the future. The commission met four times over the course of 2019 all across the state of Georgia in Savannah, Waycross, and Atlanta. Um, and at the end of that process, they issued a report back to the General Assembly, and the first recommendation on their report was, we need more time. Uh, this is a huge challenge. There's a lot of data to look at. There's a lot of things to consider as we look at solutions. We need another year to look at this. So I'm glad to report to you that uh, during the conclusion of the 2020 legislative session back in June, the legislature reauthorized the Georgia Commission on Freight and Logistics for a, a second year of work. Uh, they have already had their first meeting a couple of weeks ago up in Atlanta, and then they will meet another three or four times between now and the end of the year. And so they're going to be looking at a couple of key questions. I, I think having gotten their arms around and having quantified what our freight and logistics future looks like, I think they're asking three questions. What projects or what types of projects do we need to be building to address these challenges? How much do those projects or those types of projects cost? And then the big question is, how do we pay for those? And so the Georgia uh, Transportation Alliance and the Georgia Chamber, we will continue to work alongside the commission to support them from a policy 
and logistics perspective and continue to advocate for Georgia's business leaders and our local chambers all across the state of Georgia as they come up with what those solutions are for Georgia's freight and logistics future. So with that, it's great to be with you all today. Um, it's great to be able to talk a little bit about what Georgia's future looks like, to talk a little bit about where we are in a post post-pandemic environment as it relates to freight and logistics and really reiterate the message that Georgia's transportation system is strong. We've seen great political leadership over the last several years in this area. I anticipate that we'll continue to see good, strong political leadership into the future. And so from our perspective, Georgia's uh, freight and logistics future is very bright. As we continue that work, the Georgia Transportation Alliance has kicked off a campaign, the Georgia Can't Wait for Freight campaign. We're using that to advocate for and educate local business communities about these issues that we've talked about today, but also what's going on with transportation in their communities. And so I would encourage you to go to our website at can'twaitforfreight.com. Uh, go follow our Facebook page, check us out on Twitter, and we'll be posting more updates there as we go through this process. But again, really appreciate the opportunity to be with you today and talk through these issues, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.